Well, we were living in a small village in upstate New York until I was in the sixth grade, and my dad um, transferred from the Bendix Corporation in New York to uh, Lockheed Martin in Orlando. Some of it was an uh, issue regarding my mother's health to get in a warmer climate, uh, but that was the uh, way we came, and that was really the result of the first big economic upturn in Central Florida, which was the aerospace and defense industry. Mm -hmm. When was that that they came down? 1960. We came six months before Hurricane Donna, which was kind of interesting because that was our first big memory here. And then in 2004, as mayor, I was in charge of trying to uh, prepare for, respond to, and recover from three major hurricanes 40-some years later, so it was kind of interesting. The biggest change uh, post Lockheed Martin was probably October 1st, 1971, and that's the day that Walt Disney World uh, opened uh, its doors, and that was a, a game changer for Central Florida. Now the number one tourist destination in the world. Uh, we're doing other things to diversify the economy, but that certainly was the, the number one game changer for the, the region. What's been interesting, though, about living here since um, elementary school, junior high, high school, Valencia Community College, and UCF, in other words, all levels of my education in Orange County, is that it's always been a work in progress. Um, if I had visitors come from uh, the north, even in the 60s, they would say, boy, the place has changed in the last couple of years. It's always been a dynamic and changing community, but the, the big thing I would say would be Disney World. What did you do for fun in high school? Well, there's a camera running. We can't <laughs> talk about that right now. <laughs> uh, for fun, we... Um, we grew up in a neighborhood called Sky Lake, um, which there were a lot of young kids in the neighborhood. And we hung out a lot. Uh, we played uh, sandlot sports almost every day after school. If it was football season, we'd play tackle football without any pads. Or if it was baseball season, basketball season, whatever. So we did a lot of outdoor activities um, in that regard. And we, we did a lot of teenage pranks and just hung out as a bunch of guys as, as teenagers in, in the high school years mostly. Any favorite places to go cruising or hangouts? Well, in, in my generation, the place to be was Steak and Shake. And we literally cruised Steak and Shake. And this was a little bit after the Sandlot Sports when we were maybe looking for girls and things, things of that nature. So that was, that was a lot of fun. Now here there was two Steak and Shakes, one on each end of Colonial. Right. Which one was your hangout? Well, actually there was one on the South Orange Blossom Trail as oh, okay. well. And uh, we would go there, and the one in East Colonial, uh, and then one up in uh, Winter Park. So, um, but it was, it was some, some nights you'd get in the car and just cruise from one to the other, seeing what was going on. <laughs> oh, you've probably heard this from others, but I wish Ronnie's restaurant was still here. We used to, uh, in my early political career, we would go there a lot, and there was uh, uh, a lot of political conversation, a lot of, uh, business meetings took place there and it was just a great place for to meet folks and uh, old Orlando kind of showed up and you saw a lot of people you knew but um, that and um, you know some other places have disappeared from the landscape and the, kind of those home cooked local restaurants were you know your big cities they get overtaken by the chains and so on and I, I miss some of those places. I think one of my my great ch early childhood memories in Orlando was uh, my dad taking me to a lot of uh, sporting events like the t old Tangerine Bowl. Uh, we had some semi-pro football teams in town, the Orlando Broncos and the Orlando uh, Panthers. And that really, I think, kind of set um, a goal for this community to wind up in a place where we'd have the Orlando Magic. We'd be talking about um, World Cup soccer possibly coming here, um, and, and they've been here before, of course. So I think that, that would be the memory that I would uh, refer to of it. Did you imagine yourself where you are now? Oh, heavens no. Nobody in their right mind would have ever seen me as mayor when I was in, the, in high school. Um, I probably would be uh, voted most likely to be forgotten. Um, I was uh, an average student. Um, still had a strong work ethic. Still, still focused and did what needed to be done to get through, but I was not a, a star scholar, nor uh, one that would you would think would be here. In fact, I, I was not college bound uh, when I graduated high school. Mm -hmm. I went to work on the assembly line at Lockheed Martin in the footsteps of my dad for a couple years, joined the Army Reserves, and then uh, some of my buddies were talking about uh, 
Valencia Community College. And I thought, well, nobody in my family's ever been to college. This doesn't seem like a, a good idea. And the more they talked, the more I listened, and I was persuaded that that was a good idea. And all of a sudden, uh, learned that I could excel uh, at, at that level. And of course, from there, went to Florida Technological University. And uh, as an interesting side note, uh, the first piece of legislation that I ever filed changed the name to the University of Central Florida. So uh, I guess, I guess I, to, to sum it up, this has really been a remarkable place for opportunity. Every time I had a goal, a door opened in front of me. Uh, going to work at Lockheed Martin was a, a big deal for an 18-year-old. I was hired on my 18th birthday. Uh, having Valencia open when you came from a family that had never been to college before, uh, the opportunity in that system to go straight from Valencia to a, a brand new university where I was a charter classman, just opportunity after opportunity. Uh, if I ever thought then that I would wind up in arguably the strongest political job in Central Florida, I would tell you, you probably were out of your mind. <laughs> <laughs> this was a special session of the legislature. Um, session A, and so November 78 was the election, and then this was like in, this, in January or February of 1979. It had four sponsors, two Democrats and two Republicans. It was the first bill I ever sponsored. It struck the words Florida Technological University and inserted the words University of Central Florida. So this is the name change for the university. Cool. This is what I built when I worked the assembly line. The wings and fins for a walleye missile. This walleye had a TV camera and his nose cone, and um, it was a forerunner to this modern, um, they call them fire control systems, mm -hmm. with lasers that can go around mountains and all this stuff. But the pilot would have to fly by, lock the camera in, and then make a second pass on the target, and the camera would pick up the target and hit it. But I built these wings and fins. But it was an admiral named Stan Arthur about, I don't know, five years ago or so, six years ago, I went and saw, took a tour of Lockheed Martin as mayor, and Stan said, well, how many of those missiles did you help build? And I said, probably about 20, 25 percent of them I'd actually touch, because building the wings and fins was, was uh, not as, as complex as some of the other stuff. And he said, well, I dropped your ordinance in Vietnam. He said, I had to because I dropped hundreds of those things. And he said, you had to touch some of them. I said, oh, absolutely. So he presented me with this picture. His signature is faded now, but it just, I, you can read that if you want to. For, your, for Richard, your fine craftsmanship on walleye as a young man with Martin Marietta in the 1960s served me well as a young pilot in Vietnam. Thanks for your support today as county chairman to the Lockheed Martin citizens of Orange County. They continue your tradition, helping another generation of warriors protect our freedom. Stan Arthur, cool. President, Lockheed Martin Missiles and Fire Control nice. Orlando. That's whoever, amazing. Whoever would have thought it. I got hired for that job on my 18th birthday. I went in, uh, I graduated high school in, uh, I hate to say this with a camera run, uh, 6666. Oh, wow. But I didn't turn 18 until August 30th of that year. So that summer, I dug ditches and painted houses and stuff. But I had gone to you know, apply, and they said, well, you can't work. You have to have a federal security clearance, and you have to be 18 to get it. So the interviewer said, come back on your 18th birthday, and I'll give you a job. I don't think they thought they'd ever see me again. So I walked in on my 18th birthday, and the, man, the gentleman's name was Mr. Bell. I'll never forget it. I said, is Mr. Bell here? And they said, well, yes, he is, but who are you? I said, well, I have an appointment. It's August 30th, my birthday. And he said to come back on my birthday and he'd give me a job. They were all laughing. Right? <laughs> so I did a manual dexterity test and took the physical and got hired to put wow. wings and fins on a missile. That's amazing. Wow. Great opportunity. Absolutely. And That's by cool. the way, all my buddies, all my buddies, this is 1966, we're making a dollar an hour. That job paid $3.66. And I was like, <laughs> I was riding tall. <laughs> Anyhow, this is fun. I love this kind of stuff. Oh, absolutely. The beach working. Now I got to go to work. Sorry about that. <laughs> That's the bad part.